Hello, good evening. Welcome, thank you so much for coming. Welcome to the world premiere of the new film by Catherine Hardwick, Prisoner's Daughter. My name is Cameron Bailey. I'm the CEO here at TIFF. I'm so glad to see you all here uh, today. It's been great to have people back at the festival in full, uh, filling our theaters, enjoying movies together again. It's been a minute. We haven't always been able to do that over the last two years, but I'm very glad that you're all here this evening. Welcome. All right. I want to thank some of the people and partners that make what we do possible at TIFF, including tonight's screening, the whole festival, and all of our activities all year round, beginning with our lead and major sponsors, Bell, RBC, Bulgari, and Visa. Thank you for your continued support. Thanks also to our major supporters on the public side, the Government of Canada, the Government of Ontario, Telefilm Canada, and the City of Toronto. And we want to remind you that we have a very important prize here at the festival. It's the People's Choice Award. You decide who wins it. And we encourage you to go online to tiff.net slash vote and vote for your favorite films. And also, thank you to VVS Films and Capstone Global and also the United Talent Agency for providing us with this film tonight. It sounds like VVS and Capstone and UTA are here. Thank you. And also a big thank you and welcome to the sponsor of tonight's screening, Accenture. Thanks for being here. And on behalf of President Jeffrey Russell and Toronto lead Piyush Bhatnagar, welcome to all of the guests of Accenture tonight. Uh, I want to just um, take a little tour through the career of Catherine Hardwig, uh, a filmmaker I greatly admire. Uh, she studied at UCLA. Uh, the first film I saw by her was almost 20 years ago. In 2003, she made a film called 13, which is just magnificent and disturbing in a, in a, in a way. It's about two 13-year-old girls. It's a fantastic movie. Highly encourage you to see it if you haven't. She went on from there to make Lords of Dogtown in 2005, and then a film you probably have all seen called Twilight in 2008. Uh, went on from there to Red Riding Hood, uh, Miss You Already, which was at the festival here in 2015, and also Miss Bala in 2019. This is her latest film. She has a real talent for telling stories that kind of get under your skin, that connect with audiences, and also for her work with actors. And she's got a terrific cast here, led by Brian Cox, who you've all seen in succession lately. <laughs> and also the great Kate Beckinsale, and she's come to introduce the film to you this evening. Please join me in welcoming the director of Prisoner's Daughter, Catherine Hardwick. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much, Cameron. We're, um, we're so excited to be here. Uh, you see, I got the maple leaves going on. Okay. <laughs> Um, anyway, we had a very intense time making this film, and I'd like to introduce our producer, who, Marina Grasic, come on out, did all of our beautiful, and Guy Moshe, our other producer, awesome. Uh, we made this in Vegas, 115 degree heat. It was radical. Our wonderful Canadian, oh, Canadian right here. Marina's Canadian. Yes. Yay. And, <laughs> and our writer's Canadian, Mark. Rocky. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> he created this original story of, you know, multi-generational family trauma and you know things that were close to his heart and gave us this beautiful script and we have our one of our stars Tyson Ritter Woo! <laughs> and Tyson also has some beautiful music in the movie so we thank you for that and we've got Christopher Convery Woo! <laughs> Uh, very brave to be acting with all these badass actors that you're going to see, like Brian Cox. <laughs> and Kate. 
Beckinsale. <laughs> so we're all so happy, and we want to um, enjoy the movie. And does anybody want to say anything, or we're just we're, we're all good? <laughs> okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Please join me in welcoming back to the stage the team from Prisoner's Daughter, director Catherine Hardwick, Kate Beckinsale, Brian Cox, Chris Convery, Tyson Ritter, the screenwriter Mark Bacci, and the producers Marina Grasic and Guy Moshe. Congratulations to all of you on a very moving film. Um, and thank you for bringing it here for its premiere. It's great to have those of you who've been here before, great to have you all back. Um, you know, I saw this uh, coming out of the pandemic. We had a lot of lockdowns here. We spent a lot of time in lockdown with our families. And um, it's, it just hit different, this film. That, that theme of reconcil reconciling with your family, when we spent so much time with our family and all the drama that we bring to those relationships, <laughs> it somehow felt like it was a different kind of experience watching it. And I wonder when the film came to you and did what we've all been through have any element in terms of what drew you to this story? Ooh, that's, a good, that's a good idea, a uh, good point. <laughs> I think it did because you became much, everyone became much more intimate with their relationships during the pandemic. And this, Mark wrote such a beautiful, intimate story that you feel like you're just right there, you know. <laughs> yeah, we were right there with these guys <laughs> in the house a little bit too long. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Mark, uh, I didn't know your history in Toronto, actually, and you, you did many things. You were a restaurateur in Toronto for yes, some years as well. So welcome back. Thank you. Um, what was the inspiration for telling this story for you as the writer? I was um, at a point in my career where I was writing a lot of stuff about vampires and zombies. <laughs> and um, <laughs> it's true. And it was a bit of a crossroads. And this little voice in my head just said, right, I was going to think about leaving the business. And I dumped out 200 pages of this story with no direction, nowhere to go. And, and I realized, once I started editing like crazy, that um, I just drew from my life, from experiences, from people I knew, from the story itself isn't real, but everyone that's in it has come at some aspect in my life or it was drawn from people that I saw. You know, I come from immigrant parents, Italian. You grow up with a lot of mixed people, you know, people that are criminals on one side and not on the other. And when you see them as, well, you guys know. When you see them, when you Your see... Your relations are here, I take it. Oh, tonight. yes. They're everywhere. When you see them not as a criminal, but as a, your neighbor or your cousin or your uncle, you see one side of them. And then there's the other side. And that was the, the, the inspiration for Max's character, was this dichotomy of character where he's a loving man, but he's also a brutal man. And that's why we kind of kept it quiet about what he did or why he went to jail. And we let it just show itself naturally. Thank you. Uh, Kate and Brian, I wanted to ask you both about developing the relationship between your characters as, as uh, daughter and father. Um, and you start off very close to each other at the beginning, uh, and that opens up in such a beautiful way. And I guess that has to be done in small uh, moments, in gestures, in, in nuances that show the development of that. How did the two of you, working with Catherine and working with Mark, decide what that trajectory would be, when and how you would show that they were opening up to each other, uh, finally. You go first. <laughs> Ladies first. I think we were very lucky having Catherine because she sort of created this incredibly hot house in Vegas um, <laughs> where we, you know, we got to, with Chris and, and, and Brian as well, just kind of get to sort of be around each other. I mean, I loathe Brian, so it's really difficult for me. The this is the screensaver totally of my phone. Like, That's not amazing. just for today, this really? is always. 
I fucking love it. We should all have a Brian Cox Um, screensaver on our phone, I think, right? (laughs) I literally worship Brian. So it was harder in the beginning when I was, you know, obviously not liking Brian because I find that difficult. Um, But in terms of, you know, estrangements and family stuff and difficult relationships and like... Yeah, I've had those, and I think that was, I think that's what's so great about about the film for everyone, is everyone's got that shit in their family. We've all been through some yeah, version exactly. of this. Yeah. Um, and Brian, for me, is somebody who, my, my godfather used to take me to see him at the theater in like King Lear and stuff when I was like 12. So I've been like a fan of Brian. So Brian's been sort of around. So it wasn't hard for me to feel like I had this history with him. Um, do you feel like you've got a stalker? <laughs> Say that again. Do you feel like you've got a stalker? Yeah, yeah. I am a stalker. <laughs> anyway, so... Well, you're a stalker. I am a stalker. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not a stalker. I've never been a stalker. You're definitely a I stalker. Am. I'm wearing your knickers at the moment. <laughs> anyway. She stole them. She I... stole them. I had a whole bunch of them and they've all gone. She stole them. All tartan. Anyway. You do the next bit, because I've gone off the right, piece here. Uh, it's, I, I didn't know what to expect this afternoon. I have to confess, I expected probably a total disaster. But the great thing is, that woman's heart. And that's what's in the show. It really is what's there. And then her, this one, is so committed so totally committed to the role. You, you can't go wrong when you're acting against somebody like her. You just simply can't go wrong. Because acting is reacting. And she is so fabulous. She's just incredible in the show. And, it, and it's a real commitment. And then we've got the extra special of this guy. You know. Thank you. you know. So really, all you have to do is do fuck all. Just be, just turn up and do the stuff because you couldn't hope for better. And also him (laughs) as an adversary. So it was a really amazing experience. And then to see it up on the screen and it really, you know, because I thought, where are we going with this shit, you know? (laughs) We're in Las Vegas. Believe me, it's a horrible place. (laughs) Nobody wants to be in Las Vegas. Nobody in their right mind wants to be in Las Vegas. But... It's that woman's heart. She, you know, visually she's beyond, you know, wonder. But she has this big, big fucking heart. And it comes through in the movie. It really does. So, (laughs) Catherine, thank you. Chris, I want to ask you, I imagine that although you have acted uh, on many occasions before, your credit list is probably not as long as Brian's or Kate's, I, I right? think it is, you know, I think their credit lists are wrong. <laughs> what was it like uh, to do the scenes that you were doing with these two uh, incredibly experienced and, and talented actors? You're and you're just coming old. up. You're saying old. I see, I see no, what you're no, doing. No, I never said old. <laughs> um, working with them, I mean, they're so awesome. Like, you know, we got along so well. They're really funny and they're really smart and... You know, I learned so much from them, you know, like just seeing them. It's like a master class to be on set with them, right? They're so awesome. And um, like Brian, you know, he was really supportive of my choices as an actor. And he, like, he, you know, helped me out, gave me some good tips. Like, you know, the scene where he's teaching me how to fight, he showed me how to, like, you know, put my arms up and all, that, all those things. And, you know, like when you're in the scene with him, in the moment with him, like, it doesn't feel like you're acting. It just feels like he's your grandpa, you know? <laughs> and... And I don't have any grandchildren. I'm so fucking furious <laughs> on my own kids for not giving me grandchildren. Um, and Kate, I mean, she's so amazing. You know, like, the emotion in the scenes, like, it really elevated my acting. And, um, I, mean, I mean, she literally gave me a kitten as a gift at the end of the movie. This makes me sound... <laughs> she's such a crawler, that woman, I can't tell you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kate. But, like, that's the best gift ever, and we got along so well, and they're just both so awesome. And... Yeah, it was just a great experience. Fantastic. He was brave. Yeah? Brave, I think. Very brave to hold your own, and you had a lot of confidence with these two. Thank you. (laughs)
Legends. No, Christopher really did an amazing job. I mean, yeah. He Let's was... face it, it can be annoying to have a kid on set. And it wasn't. <laughs> I, it, it I wasn't, wasn't going to say that. No, but I'm just trying to keep it real. And I loved working with you. you he's so... He knows all his lines always. He knows what he's doing. He's not that weird. He's a bit weird, but he's not that weird. <laughs> like, he's totally bad. He's so fun. Like, we had, a, we had a laugh, didn't we? Like, we had a lot of giggles and... Um, but also, he was really able to show up emotionally for the emotional scenes, and it was really nice. And it was, yeah. And then I kind of lost my head and brought him a cat. Because it's so, that's she's her a fault. Though. I told she you creates she's that a sort crawler. of atmosphere where you do suddenly buy someone a cat, and I blame <laughs> Catherine for that entirely. Um, I want to uh, leave some time for your questions. So if you've got uh, some thoughts, uh, one moment. I just one th last question I want to ask, but prepare your questions, uh, Tyson. The last song we hear in the film is yours. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if people would have known that. You're not just in the film, but you're a musician yourself. And it's a beautiful Cheers, song at the end. Can you talk about playing uh, a rock star who's not so nice, <laughs> but then also creating that really lovely, beautiful music at the end? Oh, thanks. Cheers. Uh, yeah, no, uh, when I read the script, I read it like in 30 minutes, and I wrote the song right after. I was like immediately inspired and I, I saw the character, you know. Uh, being a musician, yeah, that's, that, that's my past. And I think I know, I've known a lot of people that have lost themselves to addiction um, and lost their lives to addiction. And I think it was just really a role where I was excited to be able to like tribute a lot of people that I loved in my life. Because I feel like even though Tyler's a piece of shit, um, even though Tyler's a piece of human garbage, like on the exterior, like he, he's a human. And I think we always sort of lose the fact that addicts, you know, when they go too far into their addiction, they, we kind of don't see them as people anymore. And I, I tried to maintain some sort of spine for him, some, some semblance of soul. Um, so yeah, not just the addict. Yeah, so, and writing the music was fun. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's go to your questions. Uh, first, there's someone right here. Uh, Brian, first of all, I love Succession. And um, I think Logan Roy had a little cameo in the movie. Would you shout a bucket? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my question is, I know you probably don't have a lot in common with Max, the you know, very violent man, but uh, was there anything personal that you brought to the story of a... No, it's... It, it, it's... I'll just repeat the question briefly. Oh, um, I won't say the first part you said, but uh, <laughs> question is really about was there anything personal that you brought to the character of Max? Hmm? What? No, 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 um, I don't hang on to the characters I play. I let them go through me. Logan Roy, Max, they go through me, and they, the thing is to be ready to accept as an actor, that's what you do. You stand there and you're ready to accept whatever's thrown at you. Max was a great role, no question, because he was a role who was always in the, he was always on retreat as a part. Logan is a different character altogether. He's not on retreat, except deep down he is. Actually, if you question it, he is. But his reaction is to be on the front foot because of his background. So you allow the people to come through you. You know, I don't hold with a lot of the American shit about <laughs> experiencing the, you know, having, you know, you have to have a religious experience every time you play a fucking part, you know. <laughs> I don't believe in that bullshit. I really don't. No, I don't, I don't, I think it's crap. I think the actor has to, you know, we're British. And we come from a great tradition. Commonwealth, baby, we're yeah. all good here. <laughs> so you just let it come through you. And you don't get in the fucking way. You just let it go through you. And that's the great thing about playing a role like Max. I was blown away by this afternoon. I didn't know what to expect. Except I could see this woman's, and of course her, you know, her gift and this woman's heart, you know, and it was all, and him, so, and him. So, you know, that was what was so wonderful, just being a member of the audience and seeing something that you've been part of and you go, God, I had no idea it was going to be like this. And that's the great gift of, of what we do, is you never know what it's going to be like. You're, you're always in doubt. You're always in a state of 
oh, is it going to be horrible? Is it going to be terrible? But the conditions were perfect. And I didn't realize it at the time, how perfect, because Las Vegas, forget it. They, were, forget they it. weren't perfect for me. <laughs> what? They weren't perfect. I was in hospital for the Oh, yeah, yeah, but you're always in hospital. I'm never in you? hospital. <laughs> She is, she's the sickest actress I've ever I worked with. Wow. I'm never sick ever. <laughs> yeah, and she wears condoms on her shit, on her clothes. Just in case. You never know who you're going to meet. I'm single. Well, there you go. <laughs> no, but it's, 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 it, it really is what it's about. What, what we have to do is let it come through us. You know, and that's what, uh, when it's a great script, by him. It just comes through you. Thank you. All right, let's see if we can get one or two more quick questions in. Let's go over here. Yep. Hi, Don. We went to high school together four years ago. <laughs> Is there anything in our lives in Toronto that inspired any of this? A lot. Um, to be frank, um, she, was, she was never on screen, but um, Maxine, Kate's mother, was based on my mom, who struggled with alcoholism and probably bipolar as well. Um, the, the big scene in the kitchen really did happen. Um, there's a person that Max was based on that I don't want to mention by name because a lot of you know him, who was a well-known criminal um, who was murdered actually in, in Mississauga. Um, we're, Marina and I are both from, oddly enough. Um, oh, Mississauga in the house, look at that. And the, the thing about that person was, uh, I saw him with his family and he was the most loving guy. With me, he was the nicest guy, but I also saw the other side of it. And so I just pulled on all these uh, pieces of my life. I've had a lot of addiction in my life. Tyler's character is based on somebody from my life. Don, you know most of these people, to be quite honest with you, so <laughs> hope that answered your question. Love you. Thank Love you. you too. All right, I want to get to one more question, but I want to go up here. If you got a question up here, I can't fully see you, so please call out. Kate, I love you. More of a comment than a question. <laughs> Anybody else, quickly? Yes? No? Okay. I wanted to end on Kate, I love you. I think that's a great way to end, don't you think? <laughs> All right, okay, go ahead. Right there, yes. We've seen you in so many things over the years, and I can't say I've seen them all, but certainly, certainly, this film, for me, it was a total departure from your characters that you played in the past. And I think if I just stumbled across this film, and in the middle of it, I might have said, oh, that really looks like Kate Beckinsale, but this actress. The, the question is, um, it seemed like a departure from uh, what he's seen you uh, in before, and what for you, was it a departure? I think the thing in my experience in my career is you do these <clears throat> sort of big, silly movies, and then you do quite a few smaller independent movies. People are much more aware of the ones where you jump off a building. So, I, you know, for me, I kind of tend, I feel like I do, I kind of space it out, but like you say, not, not everyone sees those. Um, this one I felt just, I don't know, the, the family dynamics were so intensely interesting to me. Just the kind of, obviously there's a fractured marriage, like there's two fractured marriages, there's fractured relationship, there's grief, there's bereavement, there's that horrible kind of pre-bereavement that's a thing that I feel like people don't talk about when somebody in your family is very sick and you know it's coming, which is a very specific kind of grief that's really hard and, and one tends to not get much sympathy for because it hasn't happened yet, but your life's already changed so much. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I always approach everything that I do the same way. It's just that, you know, if you're, if you're mainly running up walls and jumping off buildings, there's not, there's not the kind of, 
it, the, the character isn't isn't sort of fleshed out in the same way usually in all those kind of movies. Um, but I'm not a movie snob. I'd love to have a really like this was a, a really special one. This was a you know I loved that. But I you know I like I like. I like movies. Like I, I just, I like doing all different kinds of movies. I don't feel there should be just kind of one type. Every time I do a movie, it feels like a departure because I can stay home for a year quite happily, and so I, you know, I feel like, oh God, now I've got to go out and be in front of people and not be recluse with cats anymore. And it's always a, <laughs> it's always a little bit of a departure. But no, I think I, for me, I mean, I understand that it probably does feel it for you. Also, I they look quite rough as well. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Thank you all. Thanks for being here. Please join me in thanking the team from Prisoner's Daughter, director Catherine Hardwick, Kate Beckinsale, Brian Cox, Chris Convery, Tyson Ritter, screenwriter Mark Bacci, and the producers Marina Grasick and Guy Moshe. Thank you all.